the salmon's been the number one most important source of, source of protein for our people for many, many thousands of years. We have a really special, unique relationship with the salmon and with the river. A uh, very deep, spiritual uh, understanding of the way the salmon spend their lives being born in the Adams River, which is one of the largest sockeye spawning grounds in the world. And that is in our home territory. So understanding and observing and being a part and close relationship with the salmon um, as they play out their lives in birth and death in the Adams River. So they're born there and then they travel out to the ocean and they come back four years later and they die there and then the, their life cycle starts over again. The Adams River is some of the oldest geology in BC and the gravel beds that uh, the salmon like to lay their, their eggs in is very unique in terms of geology and that is why it's one of the largest spawning beds in the world is because the geology and the way over thousands of years the the water has shaped the land and the the gravel and just the 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 landforms and the, the watershed and the way it is it's been amazing that what our people have learned by observing the salmon just in their strength and their resiliency and their diversity even within sock one species the sockeye salmon there's huge genetic variation and I've recently learned that with every one of the six to nine thousand different creeks and tributaries that enter into the Fraser River is has their own unique genetic variation of salmon or sockeye salmon so we want to appreciate that and we organized the wild salmon convergence which, which took place in our home community on the Squilax Reserve we organized that so that we could have invite people, some really key people who have been doing work to protect salmon, to come and just appreciate them. Be, um, given that this year is one of the largest salmon runs of recent times anyways, uh, doesn't compare to the stories that our elders tell us of how the salmon used to be so abundant that y you could walk across the river on the backs of the salmon. There was also a story that I was told that at one point in time, um, right at the, the mouth of the little river that flows uh, from the big Shushwap Lake to the little Shushwap Lake, which is where our the wild salmon convergence was held. But right at that location, at one point in time, there were so many salmon that came home to, to to spawn and of course they die when they spawn that they had actually plugged up the mouth of where that river enters into the little Shushwap Lake and it had plugged it up so that there was a huge flood and that the people had to actually go and clean out all the carcasses of the salmon um, because they were so abundant and it had caused this big flood. So that just gives you an idea of how many salmon there used to be. So even though this year was, we wanted to appreciate that, um, you know, every four years is the dominant, what they call the dominant run. And this year was, was the dominant run. Um, so we wanted to just have people come and appreciate that. We also wanted to organize some strategic conversations and have different key individuals and coalitions come together and converge in the spirit of the salmon in the same way that they converge when they come home to spawn. I worked with some women in my community, Janice Billy, Kanahus Manuel, to think through an agenda that would help us to kind of go deeper into the issues and link up these coalitions so that we can build our capacity to influence uh, the b broad majority of the society to educate people to build campaigns and coalitions that would help us to to not only appreciate the salmon but also to make change especially as it relates to issues around water quality and around food sovereignty 
around uh, farming communities and communities impacted by mining. We just wanted the intention of this convergence to be asking some questions and helping people to think through how it all fits together and how we can be more powerful working as a larger whole. So with that, we we were really happy of the people that came out to the to the event and the words that were shared and some of the action items that were identified. So I was really happy that first of all Kanuhus Manuel, who is a Shaquamak woman from our Nisqalmuth community, she comes from a, a really strong family and a, with a long legacy of political activism. The, her grandfather, the late Grand Chief George Manuel, uh, led the Canadian Constitution Express that had Aboriginal title and rights entrenched in Section 35.1 of the Canadian Constitution. And her father, uh, Art Manuel, who was at the Convergence, um, leads the Indigenous Network on uh, Economies and Trade has done some amazing work. He he did some work a uh, number of years back and had um, the first amicus curiae brief submitted to the World Trade Organization about the softwood lumber dispute and um, how indigenous peoples are subsidizing the softwood lumber industry um, through their non-recognition of our Aboriginal Thailand rights of the land where the logs are taken from. So I was happy that she was there to talk with us about the work that the way that she's carrying on the legacy through the setting up the sacred fire at the Mount Poli um, disaster where the Imperial Metals uh, mine had breached the tailings pond um, and spewed out uh, millions of cubic liters of toxic sludge into um, the Quinell Lake watershed that that ultimately runs into the Fraser Basin. The talk that she gave to us and the work she does is really a very powerful demonstration of that responsibility to who we are as Shaquatma people. In thinking about the wild salmon issue and bringing together key people that are doing this work, what are the key messages and how can a campaign effectively communicate how important the salmon and the rivers, the water, are to our people, uh, but in a way that will motivate the, the non-Indigenous peoples that are doing work through the, the coalition called Salmon Are Sacred, which is headed up uh, in large part by Alexandra Morton, who's been doing a lot of work um, to to get the fish farms out of our ocean and uh, documenting and testing salmon for the viruses that are traced back to the Norwegian fish farms that have are um, have been established in a really big way in the Broughton Archipelago in the west coast. So I'm really happy that that. Alexandra came to the Convergence and shared in her time and her energy and traveled all the way from northern Vancouver Island to do that. I was also really happy that Elder Eddie Gardner from the Stolo Nation also came and he actually helped to open up the conversation in the morning. Eddie was there to talk about the intertribal relationships and the Stolo people, the Stolo people in the lower Fraser River. We've maintained trade relationships with them and with with indigenous tribes all along the Fraser River for many thousands of years and that it that's really important for us to remember because it was those relationships um, that were the basis of the way we governed the fisheries. I'm also happy that David Close from the UBC Fisheries Center also came to the Convergence and shared uh, shared his work and his experience in working in the U.S. Um, where there has been some success at the grassroots level to hold the U.S. government accountable for some of the laws uh, that they have in place to protect the indigenous fisheries in, in, uh, in and around Coast Salish territory around Seattle. So there was the Bolt decision that he referred to, um, which was really good to learn about, and um, to learn about how the Indigenous peoples there actually were successful in holding them accountable. I'm also happy that Nicole Shabas was also a part of the Convergence, and she came to share her insights and give 
uh, kind of a bigger picture um, analysis of what's happening right now with the salmon and the legal aspect. In terms of key messages, a few people put their names forward to, to be a part of a working group to help organize a larger caravan or a larger convergence uh, that will travel all the way from the headwaters of the Fraser you know, up in the McBride or Mount Robson area and um, land in Victoria, ideally at the legislature buildings in Victoria and think about how we can mobilize people on a grander scale like that and have the caravan follow the Fraser River to symbolize the journey that the, the salmon go through and to um, just to bring people from a lot more communities together to 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 work who are working on the issue and who think it's important um, so with that we need to think about a communication strategy we need to think about what our key messages are and how we want to communicate that who we want to communicate that to identify some some more key coalitions which groups do we want to include who maybe aren't included and what it, who who is a willing and able to help us to use the technology to reach a wider audience